Hello guys, today we're going to be running through Robinson Crusoe Adventures on a Cursed Island. This is probably my favourite cooperative game. It's incredibly thematically strong and has very, very nice European mechanics. It's got a little bit of dice rolling, but nothing you can't completely obliterate if you wish to. Um, it does have a rather impenetrable rulebook, so hopefully this run through will help clarify some points. I will say that I may get some rules wrong and I may miss a couple of points as time goes by. I'm sure people will comment um, and <laughs> point those out in the comments below. So if you do want to cast your eye down, apologies if I get anything wrong in advance. Okay, on to the game. So guys, this is the island on setup. Now for this tutorial, we will be playing the castaway scenario. Okay, we can see it has 12 rounds and we're gonna go through each of the rounds. It does give you a little bit of spiel. It gives you the goal, which I'll spend a little bit longer on. It tells you what certain things are worth. Victory points I've never really used. And it gives you some extra information here. Now it's a standard setup. Some of the uh, missions, so this is one which is um, an expansion mission. For example, Tracing Doctor Livingstone, my favourite, has specific instructions. So setup changes. So just be aware that not all of the games are going to be set up like this. But um, the vast majority, I suppose, will be. So that needs to sit to one side. And uh, we will need to place... The turn marker on turn one to represent that we start the game. In terms of the board, over here we have the map. You can see that there is our beach tile, which is where we have begun our exploration. We've washed up on there, so we'll put a little X to represent where we are. I've already built the event deck. Now the event deck comprises of two types of cards. Okay, you're looking for the symbol here. Oh, so the symbol here, the book symbol, and the question mark symbol. We look at the length of the game. First uh, game is 12 turns. So we're going to take half of the book and half of the event and then the rest we're not going to use. There are hundreds of cards, well, not hundreds, but there is a lot of cards, which we are not yet going to use, so you won't see all of them come out in play. You can see, there we have the morale track. This is set to zero. We're neither happy nor depressed about being on the island. That will change as people get hurt and if people make camp. Over here we have, um, it's not clear either whether these should be white or black cubes. You have the uh, option of either. Um, so you could, oh, there we go, don't really care. I've used white. So I don't think technically they should be on the board. I put them above the, the line to show that these things have yet been built. And when they are built we pop, pop them down and so on and so forth. You can see as well, it has the requirements for building, but we'll come to that later on. Underneath you have the inventions, the way I always remember it. You have nine inventions marked by the little arrow. Those are mandatory every single game, and then five random ones. You can see there's a decent stack of inventions that we aren't going to use this game. Um, basically, you deal out so there's four spaces left. Um, I think it's uh, nine and five. But yeah, if you leave four spaces, you've done that correctly. At the bottom, we've got our starting um, event. So we have one good event, and then after that it goes bad. So we have to pop that in. This is for where the animals would be, but we don't have any animals uh, that we found on the island yet. These are all the exploration cards, and then uh, these dice will not play in the game for the first three turns. But um, they will eventually come out and make life harder for us. Going down to the player board, we have the carpenter, 
Now I've bought these stickers off of the Portal Games website. They are really cool actually. Uh, they add a little bit of flavour. So you've got the lady. Oh, <laughs> and you've got the man. Okay, so you can see that they're quite nice. And that just gives you a little bit of flavour, but ultimately it's just colours. This is the person's health, so that sits there on the uh, first cube. See these down arrows? This is just saying they're not a health point actually. What will happen is at that point if we lose a wound we go down to there and that's a complaint. Okay, so you can see that the carpenter, he's relatively moany, he complains quite a lot. Um, the text here consists of all of the different um, special abilities that people can have and that's used with determination. We also have another invention, so each player comes along with an invention. This is an invention he personally has, so you obviously need the rope in order to build it. You can see down here it says to determination, so that basically means if it's built, we're happy that people have listened to us and therefore we, uh, we get a bit more determination. As I'm playing this as a three player game, I've got three players, I've also set up with the dog. And you can see he can either do a green action or a red action, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So we've got the different players. In addition to that, we start the game with two things from our shipwreck. So uh, it's not the best for me. Um, these technically, again, should be marked up. So uh, we've got the pipe and tobacco, which is a free way to get determination. And we've got the Bible, which really, really buffs our make camp action. So they're going to go on there, they're two time uses, after we've used the Bible twice, we've read it all, there's no more hope to be discovered from that. Uh, the only other thing I think we've really got is a few tokens sort of lying around here, we've got some adventure cards, and we've got a bag of goodies, so we're going to get treasure uh, items in, in here, so I'll just pop them in a little cool bag, because I think it's nice. So, how do we play? Well, the goal of the game is varied based on the scenario. So, we're playing the castaway scenario. Quite clearly says, build the fire item and the depicted pile of wood. So, this actually sits off of the board and we're going to have to build on it. You may pay any number of wood onto the pile, but no more than one column per round. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, we're going to start with this one, so one first, then two, then three, then four, then five. I think I play it that way, which is technically rows, but it doesn't make a big difference. Okay, you can put the wood in, on the action phase. If it's the 10th, 11th or 12th, we've built the fire and the wood, so if the boat is sailing past, then they see us and they, they uh, come and save us. These are things which we'll draw in the course of the game, and they're specific, so each of these will have a different meaning depending on the game that we've played. This is something which is a bit lacking in my walkthrough, but the books in later games will have an effect. So if we were to see Jenny needs help, you'll see that the book represents a storm. So uh, the storm hits the camp and our palisade goes down by one. In this game, it's a simple game, so nothing happens. The temples will have an effect, so if we were to go to Livingston for example, the temple somewhere, so you go the totem, that represents Livingstone's camp. So they do have the ability to make things a bit more specialised for the scenarios. We also have two specific inventions, if we can find the mountains and a piece of wood, then we can build an axe, which will give us wood in return. If we find a fur, a wood and a rope, that gives us a mast, which gives us plus three wood for this wood pile. So that's the idea. We've got 12 turns, and you can see that after three turns we're going to be rolling one orange dice for the weather, and after six turns we're going to be rolling an orange, a red and a white. And basically we need to try and build this pile of wood, we need to try and build the fire, we need to live. If any of us die we lose. That is the goal of the game. So I pop that down there, okay, I pop the turn marker on turn one to represent the turn and we will go into how to play the game proper. So, you can see at the top of the board we have a snazzy little um, track which explains exactly what is going on at each turn. So I'm going to go through the steps in order but 
basically we're going to do this 12 times through. If we have enough wood at the end of the game, we've won the game. The first phase is to draw one of these cards. Now, personally, I draw from the bottom rather than the top because um, we're going to see that sometimes you want to, uh, you'll see events come up that you wouldn't necessarily want, uh, and that just takes away some of that. So this is drawing a card. In the first round of the game, we do not draw a card because we've already got our first card out. In the second round of the game, we look to morale, and we see where the morale track sits and whether we have to pay or receive determination. Determination is a special resource for each pe each person. It's not a group resource. It's individual. Okay, and um, if you have it, you can spend it on your skills. So you can see at the moment our morale is at one. Oh, sorry, at zero. If it was ever to rise, and we'll see how to do that shortly, that will mean we get a morale for the first player every turn. If it was ever to go down, we would be spending a morale just to stay in the game. If you go down this far, it can be very, very punishing. If at any point you don't have anything that you need, uh, you'll pay for it with health instead. So if I was to be at this point, I was the first player, because it only affects the first player at this stage, um, I would need to spend three health um, just to, to keep my will to live uh, going. So that sucks. Um, and we'll see that people start to complain pretty quickly in this game. So that's a big part of, uh, of some of the sort of um, management that we need. The third stage... Oh, I've probably zoomed in a little bit too far here, but never mind. The third stage is to gather resources on your tile. So we look to our tile and we have a little think about what resources we have. See the beach has one wood and one fish. So actually we go over to our resources stack. Okay, it's got a little bit of glare. That's not actually a different colour in the game. It's just my silly light. So yellow represents perishable food. Food which will expire at the end of the round if we don't eat it. Brown represents wood. It's at this stage specifically to the castaway scenario, we can choose if we want to put some wood on our fire pile. Given that it's very early in the game, that would not be a good move. <laughs> so we aren't going to do that. It's probably obvious to most, but we're going to need three food at the end of this round in order to feed everyone. So we're already a little bit up against it because we only have one food. Right. At that point we hit round four. This is the meat of the game. Round four involves us placing our workers onto the different actions available to us. So, the uh, row at the bottom shows the order and the actions that are available. We have two workers, each player, and this is not done in a turn by turn, it's totally open. So I can put one down, my friend can put two down, I can put the other one down, and then the third player can put the other two of theirs down, and just do it in any, any order. Two workers, I think they're supposed to represent half a day of labour apiece. So we could either half-ass the job and put down one worker typically, or we could do a good job, put down both, or share the workload and put down two dobbers between the three of us, and that will help us um, do something. So let's just go through what each of the actions mean. So first we have the threat deck. Now, the first card we have is actually quite a friendly card rather than a nasty one. So it says food crates. You notice food crates scattered along the shore. So this will normally have an, uh, sort of an event and we're about to see that in round two. Here, we can put one worker down to get one food as we crack open the food crates. Alternatively, we can put two workers down to get one food and one non-perishable food, so a can of beans effectively. This thing is going to happen as we will draw more cards. In round two we will move this on one space and put the second card in here. If we ever had a third round we would push this off and there would be an event depending on what has happened. As this is the only good card in the game, nothing happens. So it's not the end of the world. But that is one way to gather food, and that will be very, very powerful for us. The second, you can see, requires two people. So I can either do that, or we could have one and one. If we have one and one like that, so we have the uh, explorer and the carpenter doing this, whoever is on top is going to resolve the, the, the damage or whatever. But this is the only tile, really, where you must have two workers. 
At the moment, this deck of animals is completely empty, so we can't go hunting yet. But that would be that action. The third action is to build. Now, this is the building mystery deck. Okay, this is not where you would put your uh, dobbers for your action. In order to do that, you would basically go up to an invention, okay, and you would choose one to build. Now, at present, you can see this is something I forgot to mention, but most of these are determined by having a specific land availability. So, the only one we can build at present is the shovel because we have found the beach. Now, ironically, the shovel actually isn't a very strong thing to build, but some of the most damaging events require the shovel. And I have had games where people haven't built the shovel, they've lost the tile, the beach tile, it's the only one in the game, so they cannot build the shovel, and it has killed them in the game. If I wanted to, I could push one guy in, and that would mean I roll some special brown dice when I do my action, and they have some different things which we'll see when we resolve. Alternatively, if I put two guys in, again, any combination, it doesn't have to be all blue, um, then that would guarantee the build and would definitely go ahead. Don't forget as well, we can also build our shelter, but that's going to be quite expensive for us. Ideally, uh, we won't, ideally we'd build it right now, but you can see in a three player game we either need three wood or two fur, so at this point in time we cannot build a shelter cannot build a roof or a palisade, which are the other two items along here, until you have a shelter. You can't build a roof to a shelter until you've got a shelter to do it. Wood can be converted into weapons. It's very rare that that happens as some of the inventions are more powerful and more efficient use of resources. But you can always turn one wood into a sharp and stick and, and make a weapon that way. So our second action, sorry, third action is to put some workers on these and, uh, and build stuff. Our fourth action is to exp uh, is to gather. Now, gathering is impossible in the first round. It has to be on an adjacent tile, and you can choose to either put one worker down and roll the dice, or two workers down and make sure it succeeds. And you can gather one resource from the tile that you've put the workers on. So I might go away, put it on a tile with food, and I could gather one food for the camp. Uh, and we'll see that shortly. Then we have the explore action. Again, you're not putting your dobbers on this space. You're actually going to go to the island and pop them on the relevant spaces. So I might put one on here. Okay. Uh, I might guarantee one here. And then I'll put one on here. So I'm exploring all three locations. And that's typically what happens in the, in the game. Um, we need to explore out. We need to find more resources and so on and so forth. In the three player game, you have this dog, you can see he can do a green action, which is an explore action, or a red action, so he can come along on the hunt. So we could actually use this guy for an explore, we can see here that we have uh, the carpenter up there and the cook. Cook complains more than the carpenter, so let's make sure that the cook's exploration succeeds. So we've got two lots of two, they're definitely going to work. That final one is going to potentially work if we can succeed. Um, it goes without saying, you would never be able to do that. You can't send the dog out on their own. They can't come back with like loads of wood and a good story about how you found a map or whatever. Okay, so you have to use it in conjunction with another person. It has to go on the bottom. And there are other tiles that will represent that as well. So that's covered off the building, the gathering and the exploring phase. We also have these other two phases, so uh, this phase is called Make Camp. It gives you two morale and it also increases the overall morale of the camp as you tidy up. Our Bible, our special starting item, gives us a slightly tweaked version of that. In a four player game, you would cover that space up, um, so now it gives you either two morale or increases the morale of camp because it's too powerful on its own uh, as a single action in a four player game when you've got all of those dobbers. Finally, it's not a particularly efficient action, but if you are dying then you can go and lie down and heal up one wound. It tends to be very expensive for what it is, 
but that is the idea there. So I'm just going to pop my uh, explorer down there and then we will pretend that that is the end of the round. So you can see we are risking building. We are, oh actually, this is where it comes in and gets confusing. So actually let's move these guys down to the food crates because we need food otherwise we're all going to starve at the end of the night. So we're risking one exploration and we are uh, certainly doing this exploration. And that is our round. So we come down and we work through in turn. We start with this one. We take off the two dobbers and it was definitely successful. You never roll dice for these. So the carpenter and the cook return. We can see that because of this we get one food and one permanent food. Or non-perishable food I should say. So that will go up into our future resources space. So you can see it's up there in that slightly different space. And the orange cube represents food which will not go off, it will not rot. Now, there are times where you will go away and gather resources and you will not be able to come back to camp. So it's important to distinguish between the food that we've just got and the food that we already had in camp because there is a chance that we will end up not going through um, and not being able to do what we wanted to do. So that's that phase done. Now we move on. No one did any hunting, so now we move on to the building phase. So we have our uh, build there. The statistics on the dice are also slightly different. So the building one is the most dangerous one. If I just roll my dice into here, you can see that we have got the following results, which is perfect actually for the purposes of a learning game. So the V means that we have succeeded in building the shovel. So he's going to come back and we are going to flip this, removing the white dobber to show it was valid, and it's now flipped to the tall side. It's now a proper invention. The wound means that unfortunately, whilst building it, he has to, uh, sort of taken a wound on. So we move to the explorer's base, we bop down one wound, and that is that there. We also rolled a question mark, so this is where we draw one of these mystery cards and we do it, and we read it. Now personally, I always get the, my colleague to read this, so it's a two part card. I think it's fun to leave it a little bit uh, sort of interesting, uh, but the rules state that you would read all of it. So the top half is when we draw it, the bottom half is when it comes out in the event deck. So, wind ranges around the camp, throwing all the items around. Minus one palisade. Shuffle into the event deck. Now, we go up to the top, and unfortunately, the palisade is sitting at zero. So, because we cannot minus one to the palisade, everyone takes a wound. So, that was really bad. So, our carpenter goes down one. Our cook goes down one. And you can see that she complains a lot and our explorer goes down a further one and then we have to shuffle into the event deck so we shuffle it up this is where this comes into play because if you were playing with someone who was gaming it and you were drawing off the top and that was on your top then you would know that you were about to be hit with a horrible event if you draw from the bottom okay now we have no idea if we're going to be hit by a horrible event. And amazingly, we are. Okay, so I'm carrying on shuffling. But um, I have seen people continue to shuffle until they are safe, as it were, in that particular area. So that was building. Gathering is effectively the same. We go and roll our dice. Now we can't do it on this first turn because there are no tiles. So now we go to exploring. Right, the cook and the dog. They came back together, so the dog goes back to his owner spot and the cook comes back and we draw a map tile. So the map tile flips and we have this sort of uh, key. This tile consists of a wood and fish, so it's a very easy tile to uh, pull from. It also has hills, so immediately I can go away to the uh, inventions 
and I will mark all of the inventions which have hills. So our lantern needs hills for clay, our pot needs hills for clay, and I think that's it. So we only have, oh, and our bricks need hills for clay. So we needed clay uh, from our hills. So now there's three new inventions that we can build next turn, all signified by those white cubes. Now, the last thing, we had that totem, but that didn't mean anything in this basic game. But we also have that special uh, circle tile, and uh, we're going to draw a circle from the bag. Okay, this is the only bit which I think has been actively massively improved by um, the community. So basically, we found the pot means that we get one morale. Okay, I actually can't remember what that one is. But on Board Game Geek, there is a really fantastic little cheat sheet which actually tells you what these things are. So someone's made it up. So there's one which bumps your morale up, and uh, that's tobacco. So we're all having a fag. It's all nice and uh, chilled out, and so on and so forth. So there's some cool things there. That's going to go off into our resources later on as well. Then we have the carpenter. So he's gone out on his own. We roll the dice. So no wound, because it's actually much harder to get a wound. We have our victory, so our victory happens, and we have our mystery. So he comes back, and then we flip over a new tile. So here, well, let me show you it just up close. We have grassland, so we're going to be able to invent anything which consists of grassland. It has parrots on it, which is a source of food. Fish and parrots are one and the same thing. It has a wild animal, so we're going to add to the wild animal deck, and it has three treasures. So he's done very well with the treasures. We draw into the bag of holding, come out with three treasures. So we found some driftwood, so that just turns straight into a wood immediately. We found coconuts, so that turns into two food immediately. And we have found some candles. I can't remember what this is. Uh, again, I think it's tallow or something so we found an ability to make some candles so you can see that it's got a worker on it and it's a brown worker what that means is that we can go to our uh, supply we can pop in one wood from the wood that we just drew two food from the food that we just drew and one brown worker that's a missionary one brown worker now this acts as very similarly to the dog. He can only do brown actions. When he's gone, he's gone. You use it and lose it. It's candles. You melt them down, and once you've burnt them down, they're gone. So we've got quite a lot in that uh, resources chunk. We did roll a question mark, so we have to roll this. Now this is where you might want to hide it. So you find a tiger and hide. If you go back to camp now, it will track you. Decide. Discard this card and execute night phase outside the camp, or shuffle into the event deck. So if we shuffle it in, the tiger comes back to camp later on. So normally we would hide that, so you basically can decide whether or not you want to... You can guess what's going to happen, but you don't know for sure. So uh, actually, the tiger isn't too hard to kill, and he brings in quite a lot of cool stuff. So uh, if I'd known that, I may well have chosen it. So let's add it to the event deck just because we don't want to get stuck out. We brought back loads of food and wood and they're all useful and we don't really want to get stuck out of camp. Okay, the final action was to make camp. Now, um, here it says that we have two determination and one bump to morale. Because of our Bible, if we can just zoom in on that, it says, during making camp, a player can get three determination and heal one wound instead of just two determination. So, given that that poor explorer took two wounds, uh, we're going to heal him up. So I've moved him back up one. We'll give him three determination and we move the morale of the, um, the whole team up. So, very, very nice. But of course, it's a two-time use. So once it's gone, it's gone. So uh, we move up morale. And at that point, we have resolved the action phase. So, the last two phases, we're going to move on to the weather phase. 
In the first round of the game, the weather phase does not happen. However, as we go up, we're going to start rolling more and more of these dice. They can be really bad, so rain is defeated by your roof. So depending on how many levels of roof, a roof level of one could ignore one rain cloud, a roof level of two could ignore two rain clouds and so on. For every rain cloud you have, you'd have to spend one food and one wood just as you burn it off to keep warm and eat something to keep your spirits up. So it can be defended against, but it cannot, uh, if you uh, don't have that roof, it can really cripple you. The snow symbol, you must burn one wood, and there's very few things in the game that can stop that. There is an invention that can block one, but we actually don't have it out. It's not a guaranteed invention each turn. So uh, that is the, the dice. The white dice, which comes out worse, is just worse. So two snow clouds and so on. The red dice is called the predator die. So uh, just briefly going through it, this side has your palisade go down by one, as we saw earlier. Uh, that's blank, obviously. This side means you're fighting a level three monster. So if your weapons are three or higher, it's irrelevant. If your weapons are less than that, you're going to take some wounds. And this one has some monkeys come in and steal some food from your camp. So there's nothing to do there because we had no dice uh, for this first three rounds. It's still summer. And then we hit the night phase. The night phase consists of us doing a number of things. First, we eat food. So all of this stuff technically should have moved down at the end of the uh, fourth phase, the action resolution phase. So first we eat. So we eat one food per person. One, two, three, comes off. Now, unfortunately, we've got loads of perishable food. So even though there's no one who can eat it, some inventions let you eat extra food to heal, but we don't have them, that one rots. So this is why our non-perishable food is so nice, it sticks around for another turn. So uh, that is what our food has done. If anyone hadn't got enough food, so they couldn't eat, they lose two health, which is very bad indeed. Then we look to whether we want to move camp. Now it might not seem very good at the time, but it's actually probably in our interest to move camp here. That is because the further away you want to explore, so if I'd stayed here and I wanted to explore in this space, effectively I would need two guys just to roll the dice, and I would require three guys to have a guaranteed success, because we've had to spend time, one guy's worth of time, going through this tile. So by my moving further down, we're still going to get a wood. We're still going to get a fish. We're not going to uh, we're not going to hurt ourselves for exploration in the next round. So we are moving camp. Then we ask ourselves, do we have a shelter? And of course, we haven't built a shelter this round. We couldn't. We need three wood, and we don't have three wood in this round. So we are now out exposed in the elements. So everyone takes one wound. So that is the end of the first turn. Okay, one wound and one wound. And that is the end of your first turn. We'll do one more turn just to show how the, some of the other elements will work and then we'll call it. Okie dokie guys, so we're now back with round two. So first thing we're gonna do is move our marker on to two. Personally, I have that little black cube at the top just to show how each of the phases work and I work through it. You definitely don't need to. But we go back up to the top. We have our first proper mystery card. So, let's have a look. Mystery awaits. Something calls to you from the island, uh, the dark reaches of the island. So, we've got a grey token. Randomly choose one of the three and place it face down on the exploration action field. So, I think it bears, a lesser man would have prepared this a bit better, but it bears mentioning that I do have the Voyage of the Beagle expansion, um, which comes with these specific tokens, okay, and they correspond to our adventure cards. So, uh, if we find one of these, oh, we get a treasure. If we find one of these, it's supposed to be upside down like that, we get a trap. And if we find one of these, we have a monster. 
So I'm going to shuffle those up and that's going to go on the exploration action field. So basically that's uh, slightly interesting. We're going to encounter that there. We also have this grey question mark. So the way that works is we'll have the question mark and we'll pop it on the uh, on the space. So you can see just down here we now have a question mark. So now basically we're always going to be drawing a question mark even if we use two guys. Uh, trip into the unknown um, we can pop one guy on here and discard that uh, thingy. This is what I was meaning about pushing it off. Uh, we get to do it again if uh, if it pushes off the board. Randomly choose one of the three. So there's a one in three chance of it being good. Okay. Um, I promise you I haven't stacked the deck so we'll have to wait and see. But I do love treasure so there's every chance I'm going to go there. Right, so that was the first phase. The morale phase is going to kick in now. Okay, so phase two is the morale phase. Uh, hopefully I've got it in on the camera. Not quite. You can see we're now at one morale. So this is going to affect the first player. I didn't really assign a first player before, but let's say it was the Explorer. So in the first round it will have been the Explorer. It will have passed on then, so it's no longer the Explorer. It's passed on to the Carpenter. So the Carpenter gets one of their tokens. Uh... Let's just briefly talk about what they can do. Um, it's not the best font, but let's have a look. So, economical construction. It's discard two determination to spend one less wood. Very nice for building shelter. Craftsmanship. Discard two to re-roll any brown dice. So that will mean that we can uh, sort of avoid a wound. Probably we're going to use it to turn a failure into a success. A new idea, discard three to draw five invention cards from the invention deck and choose one of them. So you can build more inventions with him and Handyman. Discard three to get an additional building action. Uh, so it's like that brown one we found, that, those candles we found earlier. So he's only got one determination, but some of his special abilities are pretty powerful. So if we can get a couple more, that would be really useful. So that's the morale phase done. Then we have the gather resources phase. Now uh, you can see we're on the island tile uh, with a wood and a fish. So that means we're going to get one perishable food and one wood. So we're lucky because of that find of the coconuts last time. This is what I mean about the theme. It really does sing through. It's one of the absolute best games of blending Euro mechanics with, uh, with theme I've ever had the pleasure to play. So I pop in a wood and a food, and remember that goes into the available resources point just because we're gathering it from our tile. So that's our resources phase. We also have the option to pop in some wood onto the uh, wood pile. But in reality, it's probably not worth it at this point in time, simply on the virtue that um, that we could build the shelter at the point at this moment in time. So uh, we'd rather keep our wood for that. So. Then we move on to the assigning actions phase, and remember this is a free-for-all phase. Uh, and ultimately, I'm just going to show you some of the other stuff, so it might not make the most sense. But why don't we go for a hunt? We actually don't have any weapons at present, but we'll go for a hunt anyway. So we're going to go for a hunt there. Um, we're definitely going to build the shelter, so uh, we can use our one, one and done guy and the carpenter up there. So. Uh, that will be quite efficient. Oh, we want to get that treasure, so uh, why don't we send the cook uh, off with the carpenter? Ah, oh, yeah, we'll send the cook off with the carpenter to go and explore this tile. And we've got two more, so uh, the uh, explorer, fearing that he's going to get hurt by the hunt, is going to go and have a sleep, and the cook is going to up morale. Okay, so we're not doing the mystery awaits because we actually kind of want that uh, to happen. Oh, hang on. I wanted to show you everything. So the cook is not going to go up morale. The cook is going to go gather food because at the moment we only have two food and we need three. Okay, so we've all placed. So now we go through the resolution phase. So let's have a look at this uh, bad boy. We've got the doggy coming back and the explorer. Okay, this isn't too bad actually. So, this is a, uh, again, this is a promo card, so you probably won't see this in the base game. So, we have a uh, kill of two. Our weapons is zero. So, uh, unfortunately, that's two wounds. 
on our Gentleman Explorer. One, two. That's actually one of the weaker cards in the game. Some of the promo ones are very powerful. Plus three food, no fur because it's a tortoise. It says carapace, plus one roof if you have the shelter. That is huge in this game, but we haven't got the shelter yet, so it's wasted. We could use the tortoise shell as part of our thing. But we get three food. Cleverly, I don't have quite enough. So one, two, three. And they go up there, ready to pop down in the next round. Our island deck is now empty. We've killed all of the animals that we found, so we can't go hunting a while uh, yet now. Then we're going to do the building. So our building is just an automatic win. There's no rolling needed because we've got two. Unfortunately, our candles are gone, so they go back into the box. We move the uh, shelter down and take our guy back. And that is at a cost of three wood. This is the only thing which scales with more players. The cost of the shelter, okay, so three wood for a three player game, four wood for a four player game. Um, and we flip our little tile now to show that we're no longer out in the elements. We have a few little beds and stuff, which is going to make life easier for us. Then we go gathering. Okay, so the gathering one is kind of interesting. Uh, only one dobber, so we roll the dice. Okay, so this is nice. So this is actually about as good as we could hope for. So no wound, no mystery, and a success. Now originally we had gone over there with an intention to grab food but because we'd gone hunting we now have more food than we know what to do with and actually we'd be better off in this instance getting a wood rather than a food so we choose to get a wood. You can't get both, you can only take one. Unfortunately we had this question mark at the start of the turn which means no matter what you do you have to draw a question mark token. And that's now gone as well, so we're not going to see that again. And we have twisted ankle. So, suddenly you've fallen into a burrow, put the grey wound on your character's leg. So this is not a normal wound, so I hunt through and get the grey gatherer wound. Um, I'm not actually sure, I'm guessing that's her leg. It's more a crotch really, but whatever. So I pop that on there. This gets shuffled in, just as always. And obviously, we're going to see something terrible happen that's going to become inflamed. Maybe we need the cure to save the day with regards to that. But the cook's not got stuck outside a camp, which is helpful. Then we have our exploration, and of course, this is successful as well. So the carpenter comes back, and so does the cook. We flip this over, we now have the river tile. So the river's going to open up the map, wood and fish again a treasure and again totems don't mean anything so we pop that on here and uh, we go over to the inventions board I believe the only invention that we need to worry about for this one should be the map so we cover the map up the map is useful because of the personal invention of the explorer you can see that the personal invention of the explorer the shortcut which allows you to gather a uh, resource from another tile requires the map before it can be made so uh, it's quite an interesting invention in itself it gives you a free worker every turn to uh, do an exploration but um, also very useful with regards to the uh, the, um, uh, the shortcut so that goes in there we're gonna draw a treasure from the bag okay um, so We'll draw a treasure out, we end up with this one. So this is a specific, scenario specific one. So if I've pulled off here, you can see that this one in this rat game is herbs. So we can eat the herbs to get plus one health. Um, it's not relevant, but we'll see that if you were doing Cursed Island, which is scenario two, that would actually have been cultists candles so it would have been a free exploration so uh, a, a free building action so uh, they're different every time so we have popped that up there this is not something you have to use straight away you can choose to uh, to use it later on those herbs aren't going to go bad or anything um, and I think that is about it the only thing I have forgotten to do is remember we had to resolve one of these little expansion tokens so uh, 
we all, and we didn't roll dice because it was a doubler, but you always resolve these tokens. Ah, that's pretty cool. It's a treasure chest. So, this shows you the final aspect. You really won't be using these cards very much in the first version, um, but as time goes by, you will. We have these totem cards, or mystery cards. So basically, you're going to flip them open. Okay, let's try and find some good examples for you. Ugh, this is not good. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, right, so... Uh, say I flip this over. We found a trap, confused. You feel a strange smell and get dizzy. Now, the token I just drew was a treasure chest. So basically, that means these two symbols do not marry up. So I'm going to ignore this, okay. The traps tend to be bad. Well, they're all bad except for treasure. Then the next card was a giant snake. So discard all of your determination. Stop drawing mystery cards. But again, it doesn't trigger because it's not a treasure chest. So if you have a treasure chest, it's only going to be a good thing. Right, so we've now got the hammock. Oh, so, rest in peace. Keep this card. Starting next round, when a player uses the rest action, he normally gets plus health and additionally uh, one determination. So basically, if we were... It's annoying because obviously the uh, guy went there this turn. He's not going to be able to use that yet because it's not come back. But at the start of the next turn, the bed is now slightly more luxurious. So it gives you a determination as well. So that will sit down there and come in later on. So that's how these cards work. Uh, so obviously the blue guy then takes off. He just gets one health. He doesn't get anything else because of the uh, way it works. Uh, you can see this is where you can start to see some of the confusion. Because one of the inventions we've drawn is the bed which actually turns the uh, space into plus two health, plus one determination. Now, I honestly don't know, does that add to your uh, hammock? So do you get two determination and two health? Or does that replace your hammock? When in doubt, thematically, just follow the logic. Okay, so personally, I would, uh, I would say that the bed replaces the hammock. You can't sleep in both. But again, there is a big fact for those sort of questions. I've also noticed I haven't actually covered up, because we, we uncovered grasslands before. Cleverly, I've run out of white cubes. So technically, the cure, the rope, the bed, I missed the dam as well. So I've done a bit bad job of updating this. Um, but those are the things that we could have invented. Um, we have no weather phase, but just for the purposes of this example, let's say that we do have a weather phase. So, in this instance, if we rolled a rain cloud, we compare that to our roofing level, which unfortunately is zero. All of this stuff will have come down. Sorry, I just knocked my tripod there. All of this stuff will have come down. And we can see that in order to defeat one rain cloud, we have to burn one wood to keep dry. And some of our food gets wet anyway and rots immediately. I can't remember. I think that's the argument for it. So we lose that straight away. And what that can mean is in, in terms you can have just enough food to feed your people. And then your rain comes in and screws everything up. Now if you don't feed you lose two health. If you don't do a rain cloud everyone loses one health. So there's times where you would rather go uh, not use the wood, not use the food. It is not a choice. You have to do it if you can. Okay. So we had the rain. That killed off our wood. Then we uh, chop in our three perishable food and we've all fed. We now do not lose a wound for being out in the open. I'm not sure if I did that last time. I think I did. So uh, we, oh no, I, maybe I did, I can't remember. Uh, but at the end of the night phase, if you're out in the open, you take one wound. And, uh, and that would be the end of round two. So we're in quite a good position. Um, we've got our shelter up. We've got some good tiles. We really, really need to find mountains though, because without mountains, we can't get flint. And without flint, we can't get a fire. And without fire, we can't win the game, because we need fire to win the game. And obviously we haven't put any wood on our, our wood pile yet. But it is only round two, so now we'd be moving on to round three. Hopefully this gives you a feel for the game. Um, it is probably the best game I played last year, I would say. 
Uh, Shadows of Rimstone gave it a run for its money, but I suppose it's a year before that really. I got this in 2013. Uh, it wasn't at the time, but it's definitely my game of the year for 2013 now. So props to Ignacy for doing it. It's really brilliantly uh, together. If anyone likes Minecraft as well, I know it doesn't look like Minecraft at all, but the whole tech tree and the whole way things ping off of things, you see how like the corral requires you to build the rope. So you need to find the grasslands to build the rope, then you can build the corral, and that means you can herd some parrots, so basically you don't have to hunt them anymore. They're in a cage, and you can just eat them at your leisure. Things like that. It's just really, really good. It, it is really, really fun. Some of the expansions, um, I don't know if people are interested in them, but by far and away, the best expansion in my mind is the a Living Stone expansion. Not only does it come with a uh, neat story, so if I just find the uh, thing. It's a very interesting game. We played this one last night. So you've got the story, the actual story, in terms of what, what precipitated the hunt for uh, Dr. Livingstone. You've got the the rules, there's a few extra rules. It's probably not the one I'd start on by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not complicated. And then you have this massive newspaper, the story of Henry Stanley. And basically, you're going to set aside these special tokens and um, draw them randomly. So you're going to have the four available to you every time. And then depending on what you draw, you'll have a different story. So the first camp we find, if we drew that, is the malaria camp. So we find all these drugs, and now we're taking a wound every night phase until we build the cure because we've been infected. And it's just so thematically strong. And there's loads of different outcomes because they chain off each other, and that lends itself to different stories and so on and so forth. I can't emphasise enough how valuable this game is in terms of uh, it's the best court game I own and uh, uh, I really strongly recommend you go out and get it if you haven't yet because it's really fantastic. Hopefully you found this useful. Uh, stay gaming.